In this module, I want to share with you all about buy to let. Now, buy to let, many investors call it a starting strategy. Actually, buy to let is a fundamental of all the other property strategies. And whether you are starting in property is great for you. And if you're scaling in property, it's also great for you. Now, what is buy to let? So buy to let is a rental that you have for a property and you rent out this property under one agreement, um, a very well known strategy that is out there. But what is not known is what I'm about to share with you right now. When it comes to buy to let, one of the challenges that many investors face, especially in smaller towns, is that the rental income that they've got coming in, they find that the maintenance actually outweighs the rental income. So for example, let's say you've got a nice net rental income coming in of £4,000 a year on a small property. However, let's say the boiler breaks and that's your £4,000 gone. Now when you assess this correctly, you will find that this works in clusters of four and the number four becomes a key number. So within four properties that you have as a buy to let, when you create the cluster of four properties, you will find on a yearly basis, one of those properties will break even and it doesn't make any money. The other three will make money. So one of them might have that boiler that breaks, but the other three will create income for you. And the following year, the, something different will happen with a different property, not the same property, usually the other property, and it goes around in a circle. So what my suggestion is for you is to work in clusters of four and work out your returns on the number three. One of them will just break even. You can also work it on one buy to let. So one buy to let, you can actually measure over four years. One buy to let over four years, one of the years will be wiped out by typically maintenance. The other three years, you will make an income from that. So whichever way that you want to do this, whether you want to grow your portfolio as a nice extra uh, increment to your, your income, your pension or whatever it is that you're doing, or whether you really want to go for it and, and scale your business, think about these numbers I'm sharing with you and the key number is four and keeping in mind that three will actually get you a result in terms of the capital. I hope you're enjoying these insights. Now, I'd love to hear your comments as well. You can uh, click on that bell icon, get the latest notifications. Even I've worked out where that one is. And you can also subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm doing a number of videos like this, informative to help you to move forward in your property journey. So buy to lets work extremely well in areas where the price points are below 250,000 pounds. These can be flats or these can be houses. Now, if you're gonna be investing in the south of the country, you might find that below 250,000 pounds, you can only find a flat. If you're in commuter belt towns, you will find that it might be a flat or a house. And if you're in smaller towns, um, typically north of the country, you can find that you can still buy a house below 250,000 pounds for sure. So the type of stock doesn't really matter. What matters is, is the return that you get from your buy to let. So in larger towns and commuter belt towns, we look for a gross yield of a minimum of five and a half percent. And in smaller towns, we look for a gross yield of 7% plus. My suggestion is your focus should always be on the percentage of your return on investment rather than the actual physical number of how much money you're making. So for example, let's just say for ease of numbers, you've got a buy to let that's £100,000 and is generating you 30% return. And let's say you've got a larger deal, a million pound project, and that million pound project is generating you 15% return. And the, the buy to let project is a timeline of anywhere between six to nine months. And these are the genuine timelines. And with a larger project, that might be a 12 to 24 months, maybe 36 month timeline end to end. So would it make sense to actually do 10 of the 100,000 pound projects with the similar returns? Rather than doing one project where it got you less of a return, but in terms of your capital expenditure and in terms of value, it was actually exactly the same. We're always measuring the percentage rather than how small or big the deal is, if that makes sense. Now with buy to lets, what you'll find is easy entry levels. So price points will be below 250,000 pounds. In smaller towns, the price points are below 160,000 pounds. Also, your capital expenditure required will be minimized. And typically we find that we can get 75% loans on these pro projects and you can build up the capital that you need to invest in property much sooner than a larger project. Buy to lets also allow you to gain confidence in what you're doing. So if you're starting out in property and you haven't done property before, well, it's a great way to cut your teeth on a property project. Now, when it comes to buy to lets, 
One of the concerns is taxation, especially in personal names. But the thing is, when you know what you're doing, that can be mitigated. Also, with buy to let, one of the concerns is that you don't make a lot of money from it. But actually, yes, you do. Because what you do is you work out your return on your capital that you've invested. And with every single buy to let, what we do is we make sure that that return comes back to you. So that capital comes back to you by adding value and by having extra rental coming in. So you've got none of your own money in that project. So in effect, you've got another loan, but you don't have any money in that project and you still got the property. So what have you created? If I can use the analogy of a cash dispenser, because that's actually what you've created. So I love Vitalet and Vitalet works really well right now.